Hello everyone, welcome to Titan Web Tutorials. In this video we will discuss the custom parameters. Alright, so this is our demo project here and let's uh, get right to it. Alright, so you get to your custom parameters of your projects, to the project settings, tools, and then custom parameters. Click on the gear and then you see your configuration of custom parameters. This, this, these are uh, one of the ways to add it, the main way to add the custom parameters to your project. Now, custom parameters, you can see them as variables where you can um, run conditions on, you can get data based on, on these parameters and what they are, they're just like hidden variables that you can um, manipulate. And like I've said, query data from Salesforce, push data to Salesforce according to these parameters. There are a few more things you can do with them and uh, I'll show you that just now. So let's say we add a new parameter and I'll see my options here. So the first option is static and you can set a default value and then you can override it either from a condition and set the value to the parameter or um, map it from the URL. And we'll talk about the map to URL in just a minute. I'll demonstrate what this does. And the other option is to use a system value. Now the system values give you a bunch of stuff. So you can use a current year, you can use the browser, you can use the today. Uh, you see the two different uh, options here, either the month first or the day first, depending on where you are and how you want to use it. And then once you save that parameter, you can use it for uh, you use Salesforce pushes, you can for conditions to get um, records that are larger or smaller than today, etc. It's endless. Um, so let's say we're going to grab, for example, the OS just to see how this works. So we're going to call this OS a sys variable and let's bring in something else as well. So I'm going to add a parameter. And let's select the, we'll do current year. And we'll call this OS sys var current year. And this will say, sorry, we'll remove the OS. We'll do current year. This are wonderful. We'll hit apply. We'll publish the project. And if you notice, I have my debug mode on, so I can uh, see, so I can see the variables. And I'll click this, and I'll see, I see that my OS is Mac OS and current year is 2020. Wonderful. And now you can use this in your condition. So let's say in your get can head over here and you can use this as a condition and this doesn't make any sense to use it but obviously you will have a better conditions to run but you can say for example product code equals OS sysbar etc or you can use um, create a date is larger than now or um, a different sysbar. So these are very useful, the system variables. All right, so I'll ca cancel this out and let's see a different usage of the custom parameters. So I'll head back over here. And for instance, I have a, a custom parameter named account ID. So if I'll head over to the published version, I can see that the account ID is right now empty. And again, you can set this from within your uh, from from internally from conditions etc and now I'll show you how to set it directly from the URL so just add a question mark and you do account ID equals something and when this refreshes so whenever you open it with the parameter set you will see it directly mapped from what you got in the URL so that's wonderful that's uh, another way to use it and then let's say you would pass in a parameter for the account ID and then you can run a get saying, give me please the account where the account ID equals to my parameter. Um, now let's talk about the map to URL. 
So in order for me to show it to you, I prepared two pages here. So my first page is product catalog. And what this does, it runs a Salesforce get to show some products I have in Salesforce. So let's take a look at that get. Okay, so it runs on load and my condition is give me all the products where the product code starts with 11 dash and I'm returning up to 20 records and I've set my mapping onto my repeated strip to show me all the products. Wonderful. Next thing I'm doing, once a user clicks on this button, I'll head over to interactivity and I'll click on configure on click action. And what I see here is go to page, product page, and a second we'll see that page. And the second thing I'm doing, um, setting an, the product ID parameter, and there is a much better way to do this. I'm just, I've done it this way just to demonstrate what the map to URL does, is it sets the product ID parameter that we have in our custom parameters, it sets it to this strip value, which the strip value currently holds the product ID. So basically we'll end up with the, that product ID in the strip repeated section in the strip repeated uh, uh, product um, and we will map it onto the product ID and also we're going to page product page wonderful now let's take a look at our product page and what this does over here is just display some information about that specific product and if I'll take a look at the Salesforce section so I have a get product get product details to product page and it runs on load and it gets only one record since in my condition I've said product ID equals product ID. And I've done the mapping as well. Wonderful. Now let's see how this runs and we will show you the map to URL. So right now let's take a look at the custom parameter. So I see the product ID and the map to URL is not checked. Now let's see what this does. Okay, so I'll load the project again. I'll head over to the product catalog and I get all my products. And now I'll click the e-tone. Okay, so we went to the page, everything worked fine. We get the product, we get the information, everything looks really great. But if I'll now refresh the page, I get no information. And the reason for this is because we didn't map the product ID to the URL. We see that the product ID was reset. So in order for us to have that product ID stick, we're just going to say map to URL. We'll hit apply. I'll publish. Let's launch the site. I'll head over to the product catalog and I'll click on Let's do e-tone again, and I can immediately see that the product ID was pushed to the URL. And now, even if I refresh it multiple times, I still get the correct data. And this is how it's done.